Oh, what's up? Would you like a tour? Come on, losers. Come on in. Check it out. Get in there. All right. So this is the lobby, which no one ever comes in because everybody sneaks in the back door. It's just kind of funny. A couple samples of some trophies that we do. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I just want you to know, yes, this is the Thor hammer over here. And I must be worthy. So there you go. Check that out. It is It's kind of heavy, but it's kind of cool. One of the many strange things I get to make. Oh, I can hear Lucy barking already. That means you guys are welcome. What you do with semi-truck wheels. All right, that's the boss's room. That's Amanda. It's a mix of some baby stuff and some adult work in there. It's kind of cool. And then this is little, this is a CEO, VIP, whatever, shareholders meeting room or Luna's room. It's pink. Yeah, that's cool. All right, now we'll take you back to where the magic happens and where the dogs bark. Woohoo! Yeah. There's the little boss right there. All right, this is where all the cool junk's at. Let me show you. My wife doesn't believe that I should eat too much. She likes to keep me starving. I'm gonna murder you. And then uh, peanut butter and jellies and popcorn. That's all I'm allowed to have. And we got energy drinks, which are, I'm regulated, federally regulated, got a little NOS. Got the V8 juice, got to keep that caffeine level high. Therapy from my wife and me. We wreck each other. As you can see, we consume a lot of parts, kind of fun. Uh, there's a top fuel engine block. There's all kinds of junk in here. You'll think this place was designed by a 11 year old, but it actually was me. If you're gonna spend 80% of your life in here, it should be colorful and fun. Let me tell you about this real quick. I make trophies, I don't win very many. She's telling me I need to get back to work, and I don't really care. So back in 1958, I finished second place in women's volleyball, and I'm still upset about it. All right, come on back here. What's up, Lucy? Oh, oh. This is Lucy, if you don't know. She has her own Instagram, which is my wife's fault. It's kind of sad. She's the, uh, what is it, the uh, assistant manager of sanitary development or something. I don't know, whatever. But that's what she does. So, all right, back here is where the, this is, this is the heart of the place. I usually tell people it's where all the work happens because ain't no work happening up front with all those ladies up there. Um, obviously, where I sit to weld, there's a television, toolbox, just junk everywhere. As you'll notice, buckets of spark plugs everywhere. And there's also a lot of trick tools back here too. So, here, let me show you one right here. It's kind of cool. The fresh delivery. We got all kinds of cool stuff here. Check this out. So obviously I still got to mount it to the floor. It has a spot for all multiple dies that are over there. So I'm kind of excited to do that because what, what is it? Three eighths to, what do we get up to? What's the largest tubing on this? Five eighths. Five eighths. That's about how tall I am. So, and then obviously look, here's another piece. It's a little happy spot for it right here. I try to give everything a designated area, but you know, when you only have so much space, you just gotta deal with what you gotta deal with. So I'll take you back to my dirty room. And yes, this is a crank out of a Honda Civic, the 2.0 liter, it's kinda cool. All right, this is the dirty room, the dusty room. Come on in, it's, it's, it's dirty. As you can see, anything that creates dust or debris or particles in the air, uh, obviously this is what happens. We got our, look at this, check that out, multi-tool. That bad boy right there works every day. It's kind of cool. Obviously, it makes a lot of dust. Oh, there's, there's another one of those trick tools. Look at that. Oh, hold on. It's there. It's dirty. That works every day. As you can see, there's junk everywhere. Got a wood saw every once in a while. We do uh, wood bases for stuff. There's a big boy bandsaw, sandblaster, finger break. Everything's covered in dust because this is the dirty room, and that's what happens in here. So let's take it back to the clean area. All right, so Tom, can you tell us uh, what do you think makes a good fabricator? What makes a good fabricator? I think knowing that you don't know it all and you're gonna new learn new things every day, like say notching tube, like there's more than one way to notch tube and you have to accept that. Uh, you know, and always knowing your need to get better at what you do, you know, if it's 
better to be the more efficient or safer or smarter or whatever. Uh, that's something. Um, Cause there's a lot to learn in fabricating. So if you think, oh, I know how to do it all, you know, you get that mentality, then you're kind of stuck in your ways. And you've seen on Instagram, there's 50 ways to do stuff. And some of that stuff really impressive. And it's by young people. And older people need to accept younger people are just as good as older people. So I, I think just being open-minded is, is the biggest thing. Because, like I said, I've learned a lot. Like, we did stuff over at Schumacher one way and building race cars, and that's how you do it. But then looking on Instagram, looking at Facebook, and all these places where these guys show up their stuff going, man, I never thought about doing something like that. So just keeping an open mind. And uh, I think, to me, that's the biggest thing is not getting stuck in your ways on doing stuff. And getting, always improving yourself, too, getting better. All right, so what are your top three favorite tools? My, oh, man, that's a good one. Top three favorite tools. Uh, let's see. Man, top three. I guess you're, top, you're just top three tools. Top three. Uh, probably my, my Miller welder, TIG welder. I'm better at TIG welding than MIG welding, so I prefer the TIG welder every time. Uh, and then probably, probably these tools is the next batch, the Dynafiles, the small and the big. This, the things are awesome because you can sand anywhere uh, and get in tight little spots. And then probably, probably a bandsaw because, you know, if you can cut it in half, you can sand it, and then you can weld it back together. So that, those three things to me, if you have those three type of tools in your shop, you can do anything. So I think my three favorite are the three ultimate tools that you can have. And Lucy. What? What is wrong with you? People love you. That's all you need to know. Oh, my God. All right, so, uh, you might need to pick her up. <laughs> what go. tool do you dislike but have to use? Uh, tool that I dislike is probably my wood uh, miter saw, chop saw, whatever. Not because of it. It's just the mess it makes. When you cut one two-by-four, one, just one cut, everything in the top of your, your shop is just covered in dust. Everything. And that drives me nuts. As much as it looks like it's a little disorganized, I hate dust. So that's probably the most hated tool in my shop. All right, so how have upgrading your tools helped your business? Uh, obviously business is relative, time is money. So having good tools or tools set up to do something, uh, time efficiency. So before I didn't have an air compressor, I had to hacksaw everything. And you know how long it takes to cut a piece of tubing with a hacksaw. Now I have an air compressor. That means I can have air tools. That means I can have cutoff wheels. Or if I have, I now have a nice band saw. I can cut stuff real quick, you know, chop saws, sanders. Everything just makes stuff easier. It makes it faster. So if, you're, if you can do a job in half the time, you might actually consider yourself making money that day. So, yeah. Oh, oh, don't forget. Got the Beverly Shear. And as you can tell, hold on, wait. You just, you can tell I use that a lot because that's a lot of, that'll be fun for Lucy to walk on. And then there's just stuff on top of stuff back here. Most of the stuff happens back here. My wife ships back here, lots of boxes, lots of stuff for her to use. Uh, that is the twin towers of turbos. Uh, I make a lot of trophies, so, you know, again, only have so much room. So kind of like in, uh, in Shanghai, you have to build up to save room, so that's what I got there. There's also BMX bike that has uh, single-sided weld wheels for a top fuel bike, kind of fun. And then again, there's more buckets of junk. <laughs> Trying to figure what else we got. Tubing rack and, which is, you know you're committed when you have a forklift. I may only be 150 pounds, but I could lift 5,000 pounds, so that makes my life quite nice. Ooh. Oh, look, dog stuff. Wah, 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 wah. More trophies. More trophies right here. More buckets of stuff. Let me turn this off. So this is usually people will kind of either all buy or bring stuff by that's in buckets like this. So there's all kinds of stuff that can use for art purposes. That's kind of fun. I got my little mill. Got a plasma to torch, whatever. Uh, there's just there's just a lot of junk back here, and then we have what I call like the online stuff. So, you know, my little shelf. I do try to believe in organization. Uh, we got some trophies that are going to go out. More trophies, flowers, roses, stuff that we sell online. Bubble wrap, 
more trophies. Look, it's a cam tree. And this is one of the replicas. It's a dragster, it's kind of cool. This is the nice stuff. This is what I call junk art, which works out. People like both, so I'm very fortunate. Uh, let me show you one more room we got out here. Check, check this out, it's a big room. I'm just gonna let you check it out yourself. Check, check that out. Look at that, that's my, that's my extra storage space. Yeah. All right, well, it was good having you. See you later. <laughs> mm -hmm.